Welcome back to Blatantly Honest with Michaela Nichols. Today I caught up with Connor Dean. He's an actor, writer, athlete, and meme king. Connor has appeared on Fox's hit drama 911 and played Butch the Bully in the Cool Cat movies. He recently started a production company with his brother called Penny Arcade Pictures, which is producing podcasts as well as film projects. Today we talk about the ups and downs of growing up in Hollywood and how Connor has dealt with bullying firsthand. Connor, I see that you're like a secret Floridian and um, I actually live in Florida right now, so I'm in Orlando. Um, How is is it being from Florida? (laughs) I mean, it's it's really different. Because it's weird because I was born in Florida, so I lived there for a while. My grandparents live in Washington, so I go from a a really hot place to a really cold place. And like I'm living now in the middle in California, where it's like sometimes hot, sometimes cold. But when I lived in Florida, it was weird because I was allergic to it. We called it me being allergic to the state because I had bad eczema so I had to go I was a regular at the doctor and we wish they had like a little punch card for me it was oh my god that's <laughs> awful I took like uh, two different types of two or three different types of medicine every night uh, yeah wow one of my best friends has eczema so maybe I'll tell her maybe you're allergic to Florida I, I don't think you've heard that one yet <laughs> <laughs> but uh so how old were you when you moved out um west Uh, I want to say because we did, my dad stayed in Florida, and then we came to live here in California, and then we would move every so often, like, back there, come back. So I think we moved here fully maybe 10 years old. Okay, 10 years old. Like, fully over here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, and you're 18, so kind of right half and half. Like, you know, you still got a little bit more time in Florida, kind of, but also California. That's awesome. So let's talk about that. I mean, it's not like an easy thing to do, just picking up and being like, hey, we're going to move to California. How was that whole process? Because you were 10, so you're in school, and were you just like, hey, guys, like, bye, I'm moving to California I mean were you into the whole acting thing was it your brother like how was that whole situation so uh we were actually homeschooled my entire life and when when we heard it's funny when we heard we were moving to California I was kind of like yes I'm tired of heat let's go (laughs) but then we got here to California and it was actually just as hot so my smile just turned to like a a very frown (laughs) but my brother started like we went here for him so we he started acting and I would have to go to his auditions all the time which was super annoying so I was just like why not if I'm going to it I'm just gonna try out so I took acting classes and you know I just started doing it I started to love it wow isn't that funny how that works (laughs) (laughs) it's the worst being younger Oh, I'm sure. You're like, oh, I got to go to my big bros thing. Got to go to this. And then lo and behold, you get the acting bug and the rest is pretty much history. So did you just like, I don't know. So how old were you when you kind of got like your first big break, so to speak? So it was weird because before even like I started acting, I did a commercial for, I think it was Walmart when I was like six or seven, like around that age. So I I was acting before I even knew I wanted to, (laughs) but I want to say I maybe around 13 years old was probably when I, when I had uh, that role of me playing the character Butch the Bully, (laughs) which I'm not a bully so it's like the weirdest thing ever (laughs) yeah let's talk a little bit about that so you played Butch the bully and I mean let's just talk about like the psychology like I'm not a psychologist right so I'm sure (laughs) right but I mean you're trying out for this role and you're like this kid's a bully I mean did that make you think like do people think I'm a bully like how is that whole process like auditioning for that and then getting that role so when I auditioned for it, I, wa- I walked in because you basically, when you audition, you're going to almost the same places all, all the time. So you're like, oh, yeah, I've been here before. So I walked in. There's a lot of people and they did it differently. So it was like an improv sort of thing as well. And oh. they told us on that day because they would bring you in with different people. They told me on that day it was between me and another kid. 
And uh, I did not think I was going to get it because I am not a bully. I don't think I channel bulliness. <laughs> but we got the call later that night that I got it. And people thought because of that role that I actually was a bully. Like people believe that when they don't, they don't even really know me. They don't know me as a person that I'm a really nice person that if I hurt someone's feelings, I feel so bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so that must just have been like weird. I mean, obviously what a great experience, right? You get this awesome role kind of, and <laughs> you know, it's, it's totally awesome. But like, then people start thinking, you know, you're a bully. I mean, yeah. That just must have made you feel awful because here you are, you've done nothing except play a bully. You know, you always hear about that. Like the people that play the bad guy, like everyone hates them in real life. I'm like, that's like messed up. It, it, it really is because you don't, you don't know them as a person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the baddest, like the people who play the baddest guys in TV shows or movies are actually the kindest people offset. Mm hmm and I think that's so, like, I hear you because I've seen, you know, some of my friends have played like, you know, villains or bad guy. And I'm like, oh my God, like, I wonder what goes through the mind of like casting, because I feel like they look at a picture and they're like, this kid could definitely be a bully, which is fine. <laughs> like, that's the point. But also like, ah, oh, I'm sure it was frustrating. I mean, was there anything that went on because of like that role or just because, you know, obviously you're kind of chucked into the, the limelight, whatever, so to speak. Yeah. And now people are kind of recognizing you as that. Was there anything that went on other than just like, you know, people saying like, oh, he's a bully or did it get intense at any point? So it is kind of funny that you're that you were talking about how they look at a picture they look just like this could person could be a bully because mm -hmm. I go out for like the jock person or like any any bully and it's a little weird. But because of that role, like I've been, I've been bullied for just that role. Like people have made fun of me. People have made fun of my speech impediment that I had that I've been trying to get out of. So there was a lot like on my tennis team, people would put up my picture or make a shirt with my picture just to make fun of me. And it was, it was really like getting bad. And I, I was kind of tired of it. So mm -hmm. I just kind of ignored it and it started to just go away. Mm -hmm. God, I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. I'm sure like, you know, obviously you have this role and it's exciting for you because it's like, hey, I got something great and I'm excited about it. Like, I wish you guys were excited for me. And then kids sometimes will be kids. Like, I know you're not like a kid, but you know, kids yeah. are kids, right? And yeah. um, it's just, it's unfortunate. So I'm sorry you dealt with that, but, and I haven't heard any kind of speech impediment. So you were doing absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so you should be so Thank proud you. of yourself. So when did that come about, speaking of that? Uh, the speech impediment? Mm -hmm. So it it was like when I was younger, it was hard for me to like do my R's or my S's or things like that. Yeah. So like sometimes it would sound like what you think, like it would sound like when you're talking to like a dog or a puppy, when you're like, oh, you're so cute, you're so cute, like that sort of thing. It yeah. was It was close to that. So I had to go to like a speech, like speech uh, therapist to get, working on it to get it fixed for for acting if I really wanted to do it mm. so you could hear it a lot in that role and then it started to just go away go away go away and now I barely have it wow that's you know that actually triggered something in my head and I didn't even think I was going to talk about we were going to talk about this but why not when I was younger I actually so my name's Michaela right so yeah. I couldn't say my L so I would say Michaela or like Michaela or something it was like <laughs> W, it was W's. It was weird. And yeah, so, that was the same with me. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? You're not alone because I also dealt with that and I had a speech coach and everything. I forgot about it just until you said that my brain was like, whoa, we had that too. Um, yeah, it, it's weird when you like, when you say, try to someone's name, you're like, Michelle, Michelle, yeah. or like, it's, it's weird. Yeah. Something goes awry, you know? <laughs> yeah um so well that's I'm so glad to to hear that you've been able to like overcome that and overcome some of the bullying I mean what were you doing when you were being bullied like how did you cope with it so you ignored it right but I'm sure right. like you know is the strong jock guy it got to your insides a little bit I'm sure did you ever feel like oh I maybe I am a bully I mean did you ever question yourself well when I when I was like a little younger 
people would always tell me with like my tennis or my acting like you should just stop you're you're not good enough just don't even try to continue Mm -hmm. and me being how old I was being so young I didn't know what else to believe I was believing them so Mm -hmm. like I didn't know what else to do because they were the ones telling me that I can't do it and no one was telling me oh yeah you can there was no positivity so when I started to get older the more I heard no you can't do this just stop the more I was just saying yeah I can stop telling me what to do this is what I want to do if you got a problem with it then deal with it and deal with it yourself because it usually when people bully you there's something about you that they just don't like or they're just jealous of that's usually how it is so if you ignore the people who are bullying you they will actually get more upset about that than you would if they were bullying you so I would just start ignoring everyone that would bully me or tell me I can't do it and just stick on my road on my path to what I want to do to my goal and it got to them more than it did to me that's awesome I love everything you just said because you're so right like you're like I'm gonna do it anyway and I'm gonna you know, go after my dreams and nothing you say is going to stop me. And so it's so yeah. true. But when you're young, it can definitely, you know, it's easier sometimes said than done, I think, because I'm the same way you are when you say that kind of stuff. It's like, but sometimes some kids don't get it. And yeah. so it's almost like, how do you encourage kids to, to feel that way? Because we can all do it. It's just, how do you get to that point? So what was the turning point for you when you realized like, all right, I've had enough of this. I'm just going to say, I'm going to do it anyway. I mean, was there a moment in your mind where like, this is it, I'm going to fight for it. And that's that. So I, I had a, an acting instructor. I went to acting class with someone named Lisa Picot which she, she was an amazing, she's an amazing person. She's how I got to where I am today. So one day I just went to her and she could tell that I was not like, I was not myself. I was very down on myself. So after one of the classes, she stopped me and was just like, Hey, so what's going on? I told her about everything that was going on. And she told me to not let their words control me and my emotions just stick on my path, what we believe we can achieve. So if you believe you can do it, you can do it. Don't, do not let their words control your actions. And that was basically the turning point for me. I just knew, yeah, you're right. I'm not gonna let them control my life with, with what they think. If they think that, they can think that, but that's not what I think. I think I can do it. That's awesome. What strong advice. I think, uh, I think a lot of kids can hear that and resonate with that because it's all about what you think. It's all about perception and how you react. So you have done so many things since then. And I am obsessed, just like, I'm going to have a fangirl moment because I can. (laughs) Um, I love, I hate being like, I love the show 911 because I feel like you think about it. I feel like that makes me like kind of a sick person, but like, I actually really love the show. It's a good show. (laughs) It It actually is. is. I'm like, oh, like the drama and like, it just, it, it, it like broadens my mind to see, like, I have so much respect for like everyone that's like a first responder. So like being yeah. able to like watch the show and like follow a storyline is like, holy crap, like that's so cool um, to see them like have their life. Cause obviously they're more than just the first responders that we see saving the day. So yeah. how has that experience been? I mean, it's the number one hit show on Fox and you have been on that, you have a recurring role. Like, how is that? experience i mean is it just like the coolest thing ever so i'm i'm like you where i know it's terrible but i'm just like man i love that disaster that was a really cool disaster because it's it's really cool to see how they deal with different situations because they're trained for every situation so when i was on set it was it was really cool to see how they did the earthquake like how they got that effect because we were filming at the w hotel and there were still cars going around so when I watched the episode and you saw like a, a sky view of what was going on below, it was really cool to see that they got rid of everything, like had put CGI buildings in that had like that were destroyed. So it was really cool because they would pat you down with dust to make it seem like you just got out of the debris. And I'm just saying that dust would not come off. It was, it was stuck on us for so long, but it was just, really cool a really cool experience to see how they did it and the cast and the crew were really nice and I would want to do that again all the time wow 
Wow. Yeah. I, I think I saw that episode. It was the, the big, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was the earthquake. Intense. <laughs> intense. Like, yeah, it was I, weird. how did it feel like being in that? Have you ever, okay. Have you ever been like in an earthquake living in so, California? Sure. Maybe one. So we had like 4th of July. I think it, it was two years ago. We had we had the earthquake on 4th of July and I was actually on it on the tennis court for that. And I was playing with my friend and I just asked him, Hey, do you feel the ground shaking? And we were both like, Oh yeah, this is happening. And we just let it happen. And then the next night, another earthquake happened and it was weird because two in a row, we thought something was going on. So those were like the real earthquakes I've, that I've experienced, but they were, they were like so normal to me. I'm just, I was not faced by them. I'm like, yeah, this is happening, whatever. Wow. And then you literally play a role and you're covered in debris and you're like, this is like the big earthquake, huh? <laughs> or debris. This might be something. There were, there were fake body parts they had like oh. on the, on the side of the hotel. So you could just see like a fake hand there. I'm like, oh, this oh. is something. Oh my this is going to be cool. Oh, I'm sure. And I'm sure watching it all come together was just yeah. mind blowing because you see, obviously you're like, oh yeah, I can look out the W and see, you know, you know, X, Y, Z rolling past me, but then you go and watch the episode and you're like, whoa, I mean, that's, it's just crazy to me. So I'm sure it was really yeah. cool to experience it and then watch it. It was also cool because there are people that, that were crowding around wondering what was going on. Cause I don't think they knew that they were filming like a uh, 911 until they actually saw the, like the main actors walking around cuz i i was one of the characters that while the while they were walking off i was walking past them so we like crossed each other so it was really it was really funny to just see after we crossed the corner we were like okay we're good run run <laughs> <laughs> wow oh my gosh that's crazy what an experience i mean your career is just taking off clearly i mean is this something that you think you want to continue to pursue do you have other goals and aspirations like where's your head at so i've actually also started a production production company with my brother called penny arcade pictures where we're gonna because he decided to instead of being on the camera he wants to work uh behind the camera so he's going to film school right now so we're both like sort of writing scripts and going to probably produce some under that company. And I thought I could also combine my skills of my sports knowledge and my acting skills like of improv and put it together and maybe be a sports broadcaster for like ESPN or tennis channel. Or even I was laughing with my friends. I was just like, huh, I could maybe be one of those like that are that are broadcasting the, the video games <laughs> just on like the esports, just playing those <laughs> video games because I know those very well <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I feel like that is like such an up-and-coming field and thing for oh yeah to do like the amount of technology and stuff in the games are getting like they're like works of art I mean it, it is they're impressive. really like the graphics are really good mm-hmm. and it's funny to see how something that wasn't even thought of as a job was just like a relaxation thing is now a huge thing where you can win like ten thousand dollars for one tournament like it's crazy oh my gosh so do you play too kind of thing in your spare time or like nah. yeah yeah i <laughs> i am the typical the typical gamer of play uh play one game rage a little have a little sadness time and then go back into it <laughs> nice i hey i hear you i played um wow so world of warcraft for yeah. like a little bit at one point but yeah, that's my gaming experience for, and Candy Crush, I like Candy Crush, um, but yeah. yeah, I don't think you can really win money at Candy Crush, but no. they should, maybe if they I make mean, a thing. They have, they have puzzle, like puzzle games that are now like a uh, big game shows, like that people puzzler game and everything. True, true, true. Yeah, there's, there's always something, always hope. There's, there's always some way to win money. <laughs> always, always. So, and okay, so you act, you, oh my gosh, you want to get into some like kind of broadcasting, whatnot, whether it's games, ESPN, what have you. You play tennis, like, how is that? I mean, you're literally, I don't want to be like, you're a jock and an actor. Like, what is the whole, so obviously people see like theater kid and don't assume jock what do you have to say to the people that like think you know this is a theater kid this is a job 
this is this. I mean, you're literally like the whole spectrum. So what, I don't know, what do you have to say to people who kind of typecast others? So like sometimes there's the people that think, oh, this guy only plays jock or this guy's only a theater kid when really you could be all of those like together. You could be someone who did theater and is also doing TV shows and movies because I used to do theater as well. Like me and my brother used to do that and then we stopped. Mm -hmm. But now we're into like actual acting. So just because you do one one role and you just been getting jobs for that one role, if it's just for the jock or the nerdy kid, that doesn't mean you can pl you can't play anything else. That just means you look like that role. People like you as that role. That just doesn't mean you can't go out for something else. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think people need to understand. Definitely. No, I'm with you on that. I think sometimes you know you get kind of typecast or something but it's like yeah. you can be whatever you want to be just you know maybe put a little earring on or what have you i don't know whatever you be whatever you want to be but we prefer you be this yeah basically <laughs> basically they're like and you kind of fit this so we're just gonna kind of shove you in that one but yeah. that's that's the industry for you right <laughs> yep um so tell me i've got to know what is a meme king <laughs> <laughs> So like I've had a lot of memes of just the character I play. I've had some that are like so weird or like so bad. Like they put me on top of Hitler's face. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Then there was one. There was one that I actually really liked <laughs> where it was it was me with the infinity gauntlet just like snapping. I thought that was actually kind of funny. <laughs> but oh yeah. There's like a lot of different memes people have done of of my character. And there's a lot out there. Oh my gosh. I, you know what? I might have to do my homework and look at some of them <laughs> just to see. Because I saw that and I was like, what is a meme king? That's kind of a cool title. Like, I feel like that would be really impressive. Just like, yeah, I'm a meme king. You know, a lot of memes of my character. <laughs> it's just funny. I'm just like telling my friend, don't, don't look at my name. They look at my name. It's just like, every like every meme you could think of just there oh, goodness and it's so weird i'm sure it's weird do you ever like I, this is such a funny thing do you ever like google yourself often or is it like once in a blue moon uh like once in a blue moon i'll just google myself if it's just my name to mm -hmm. see what like to go back to see what pictures i've taken on on the carpets like basically almost a throwback yeah. to see what is actually out there that I forgot about because I think that's kind of interesting to do to just go like back in time to see everything you've done yeah wow so funny well such a small world and you have just done so many things and um it's very impressive so you should be very proud of yourself and at only 18 you have so many more and more things to do um, I said more and more twice because <laughs> there's a lot of more to be to be done I've said how I've um uh, been writing scripts and everything like that so I've been trying to get that going as a hobby because obviously in quarantine there's not a lot we can really do yeah but I'm also working with a charity called uh, LLS which it stands for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society that I'm raising money for so I know probably everyone has known someone that has leukemia or lymphoma because I know it's really hard for the family to deal with so I've been trying to help raise money for that as well. And if people want to donate, they can go to LLS.org uh, and just go to the events and go to my page, which is uh, the Connor Dean. That's incredible that you're raising money for that because you're right, leukemia and lymphoma. Um, I totally butchered that. My grandma had the lymph cancer of the lymph nodes. Um, I'm just gonna say so I don't butcher it again. But yeah, yeah I um, it's it's very scary. Um, so it's yeah. incredible that you're you're doing that, and it's so important. I think a lot of people aren't really involved with different charities, but charities are you know what kind of make the world go around. I like to think, and it spreads good energy and good vibes, and uh, so you should be proud of yourself for that because that's important that's why I try to keep my Instagram like as positive as I can and so and, and inspiring so I can tell people in the, these tough times that we're having like hey I know it's tough but I'm still going that doesn't mean that you should stop just keep doing what you're trying to do no matter what's going on no worries
Always. I think that's so well said because a lot of people are kind of discouraged. I think, you know, our whole world yeah. is basically, I feel like our world is an episode of 911, except no one can save it currently. So <laughs> it's still going. Like it's, it's already done five seasons, three, mm -hmm. like three yeah. remakes. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's like it's three remakes, spinoffs, all the above. So it's Everything. important for people like you to be like, hey, you know what? Life goes on. You can continue to press on because it's so, what a great message. And um, just, I don't know, being a positive role model, even when the world, a few people might think you're a bully and you're clearly not a bully. So we've put those rumors to rest. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. So everything else, I mean, uh, I just trying to think of any other questions that either your fans might want to know or you want to discuss any deep dark secrets um I don't know do you have anything else that you might want to add I'm, tr I'm trying to think of like everything else that I'm do you have any upcoming projects that you're working on or probably times are weird I know it's pilot season so good luck with pilot season yeah, a lot of weird things are going out. Obviously, like I'm going out for a lot, but self tapes are the hardest thing to do because sometimes you can't find the right area. Mm -hmm. But I do have some stuff coming up that I can't really talk about. Some of it is a little with my brother and some of it isn't. So yeah, there's a lot going on and, and probably everyone should stay tuned. I think so too. Yeah, it's always like, oh, I have exciting stuff, but we can't talk about it yet. But eventually- it's the worst. Oh, so it is the worst. It's it's like, oh, I want to talk about it, but I can't. But well, we might. NDAs. NDAs, man, make the world not very fun. But you know, it is what it is. <laughs> That's why weeks are here. You know, those, those yeah. little weeks. Always they have a job either way. Like if 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 everyone just knew, they wouldn't have a job. This is true. This is true. Big facts, man. But well, Connor, you are just absolutely amazing. And I love hearing about, you know, how you played a bully and you're like, I'm not a bully. And I think that's really important because it goes to like a lot of people that watch TV, watch movies, you know, they have these assumptions and it's like, actually, you don't know the person. So let them speak. So I'm glad you got to speak and share your story and share, you know, how big your heart is for others and caring and giving back. And obviously the production side, that's awesome. I think it's just incredible to try to grow that. Um, and just, I wish you nothing but the best of that as well. So thank, thank you. you. Be bold, be you, be blatantly honest.